There was a time when you wanted them, but they always needed you. So let's talk about narcissistic supply, their toxic need for it, and your power. Stay tuned. Loved ones, loved ones, welcome back to the channel and thank you so much for watching. Much respect and appreciation as always. The energy is high and the love is real. I am inspired. So we will jump right into the video. We are doing it on the go today, but the message is the same. Remains powerful nonetheless. i like to thank you all for the support of the channel, the growth, the engagement. Please keep that energy coming. You give me that love, I will give it right back. So let's go. As always, i like to preface my comments by saying I am not a clinical professional. I am not a psychoanalyst. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm none of those. I'm just a woman who is speaking on her own personal experience. And I'm not telling you what I think. I'm telling you what I know based on my experience. This video is not designed to hurt, harm, or trigger anyone. It is designed for us to be able to share information, to give us a voice. All right. It gives us a platform so that we are seen and heard and we can uplift one another based on our unique experiences. It's not about division, competition, separation, None of that. It's about unity and again, sharing information. So let's get started. Narcissistic supply and their toxic need. All right. I want to start off the video by making it clear. You were not in the connection for the same reasons. All right. You were not motivated by the same things. When you are dealing with a toxic person or a narcissist, every move they make, every word they speak, everywhere they go, everything they do is motivated by their need for supply. Everything. Everything they do is motivated by their need for supply. That is what drives their decisions. That drives their reactions. You know, what they will do and won't do, who they will talk to, who they will interact with. All of that is driven by their toxic need for supply. And based on my experience, there's really no links that they will not go to to obtain that supply. Okay. It's something that you need to be aware of because as a result of that, it puts you in danger and it puts you in harm's way. Because while you're looking to possibly like build a loving relationship, a partnership, a friendship, that's not their objective and there's not their, that's not their end goal. So as a result of that, it's like, it looks like, you know, you're operating in parallel, but you're not. You have two different goals, two different objectives all together. And what's going to end up happening is you're going to begin to feel the effects of that because you're not on the same page at all. All right. And they're going to use dirty tactics. And in the process of them using those dirty tactics, they're entertaining other sources of supply. And if you're grade A, as it's called, or if you're the main source of supply, if they're able to get, you know, an, an intense or an abundant source of supply from you, they're going to be using your energy to fuel the other connections that they're in. And you won't know that this is happening at all. Even when you're in the love bomb phase and it feels like you're the only one, you're not the only one. All right. Again, I'm not looking to trigger or harm anyone, but I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't give you the truth based on my personal experience. And based on my personal experience, there is always other sources of supply, past, present and future. Some that they came into the connection with you already having some that they've cultivated while you were together and even you know, they're always looking to the future for other sources of supply and sources of su supply can be different things. When I reference supply, that can either mean supply that they're getting from a person or it can be from interactions and things that they're doing to possibly trigger you or things that they're setting in place to get supply. It can be very deep. All right. Very deep. So stay with me. I'm going to give you scenarios in which a toxic person or a narcissist could be gaining supply. All right. So we'll approach the video that way. First and foremost, toxic and narcissistic people, based on my experience, they don't care where the supply comes from. If you're dealing with a man or a woman, depending on who may find out the lengths that they're willing to go, their experience, what they're into, they may be getting su in supply romantically or intimately from a man. They could be getting supply romantically or intimately from another woman. It could be a coworker. It could be what's supposed to be a platonic friend. It could be that play cousin. It could be that friend in the family. Like supply can come from anyone. If they run across someone who they feel has grade A supply and they're willing to allow them to siphon that supply from them, then they're, it's, they're gonna do it. You know, they're gonna do it in sh some shape, form or fashion. And that can definitely put you in danger. So you make sure that you keep your head on a swivel and you pay attention because that is real. They don't care where the supply comes from, especially 
because they're pretenders and they're posers and they're always looking to control the narrative. They're just going to lie anyway. They'll lie, cheat, steal, maim. It doesn't matter because their sole intention is not integrity or honesty or to tell the truth. Their objective is to get the supply and control the narrative so that they can smear you and play the victim later. All right. So be advised. It doesn't matter where the supply is coming from. If it's readily available, they're going to look to tap into it. And if they need to deny, deny it later, then they will. All right. Be advised. <laughs> Don't say I didn't warn you about that. All right. Supply can also come from them triggering you. Anyone who is in their close proximity, it doesn't matter who it is, family member, friend, significant other, mate, coworker, whatever. I mean, and I'll speak on it personally. I've experienced a toxic or narcissistic person deliberately hiding something from me and watching me go around, scurrying around about looking for this item. I'm the type of individual, I tend to be very organized. Everything has its place. I like knowing where things belong so that when I'm looking for those things, I can just go back and get them. That's the type of woman I am. I've dealt with a narcissist in a situation where they deliberately hid something from me just so they could watch me go around looking for it. And it sounds petty, I know, but petty is one of their specialties and they'll partake, especially if they're very low on supply. Maybe they're into it with one of their other supply sources and they're looking to get it from you. They'll definitely pull a stunt like that and have you walking around looking for something just to get supply from you. Like they're amused by that. They get enjoyment from that. It's very, very sick. Another thing they'll lie on you like they'll lie on you to get supply you know especially if there's an audience involved they'll tell not truths about you again that's a part of the smear campaign that also gives them supply something else that they get supply from it's being sneaky and conniving oh yes being sneaky and conniving like and that's dangerous on a whole nother level because they're getting pleasure in the fact that they're doing something behind your back that you may not find out about. So I won't get too deep about that, but use your imagination. If you're in a connection in a romantic and an in intimate relationship with a narcissist or a toxic person and they get enjoyment from doing things that you know nothing about, what exactly does that mean? And we already know that they're entertaining other sources of supply. That can put you in harm's way. That can be particularly dangerous. They're inviting other energies into your connection. You don't know if the other parties involved are stable. You don't know, you know, the nature of their wellness or their health or their hygiene, any of that. So again, always, you know, pay attention to what's going on around you. Keep your head on a swivel. And if something doesn't feel right in your energy, then don't hesitate to act on that. Always put your safety and your health like above all else it's of the utmost importance what's the purpose of being in a connection or a relationship if you can't feel safe or maintain your health within that all right they enjoy doing things acting things out and participating in things when they know that you won't find out again they think they're smarter than you they think they're wittier than you they think they're more cunning than you like they think they're better than you so they're out participating in things knowing that it's likely that you're not going to find out because you're not there and they get enjoyment from that and they'll never tell you, you know, be aware of that. All right. So devaluing you, as we know, there's three stages within the toxic or narcissistic relationship, the love bomb, the devaluation and the discard. All right. That devaluation phase, that is great supply for them. Them building you up to bring you down it gives them supply It's as sick as wicked and as toxic as that is keep in mind they're getting enjoyment from that so look at it like this and it causes you to be counterintuitive but when you begin to think like them then you can kind of understand their motivations and it puts you better in a position to be able to protect yourself all right it's 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 going to go against what you believe in if you have a heart and if you're human and if you have morals like you know what i mean if you have a standard these are going to go against your beliefs so just think the opposite of what you would do. They're deliberately looking to hurt you. They're deliberately meaning to suck you dry, like suck your life force. They want to bring you down. They want to work on your self-esteem. They want to get in your mind. They want to plant seeds of insecurity in your heart so that they can own you and that you will feel like you cannot do any better than them. All right. They look at you as a bottomless pit of supply. And as long as you keep dishing it out and dishing it out and dishing it out, they'll keep taking it. Narcissists and toxic people make withdrawals. They do not make deposits. All right. They make withdrawals. What happens to you at your financial institution if you keep taking and taking and taking and taking, but you never put any funds back in? You become depleted and you end up in the negative. 
And I don't know about you, but I'm a woman of abundance. I don't, I don't do negative. We, we don't do that. We keep it player around here. All right. So with that being said, don't allow someone to tap into your energy in a toxic way to the extent that they're constantly making withdrawals and they're never making deposits. All right. They're looking to put you in harm's way, plant seeds of insecurity and devalue you like they get a great sense of supply from tearing you down. All right. So like I said, when you're trying to get your head around what's going on and keep in mind, it shouldn't make sense to you like it, I'm just crazy a little bit. But this is my crazy. All right. But this is just my way of making a contribution and giving back. But I feel like I understand how they think based on my experience and things and, and links that they would go to are things that I would never do. My misery does not love company. I don't get a thrill out of seeing someone else in pain. I don't get a thrill out of causing pain and anguish to someone else. It doesn't make me happy to see someone else hurting. Like that doesn't do anything for me. It's actually on the contrary. It tugs on my heartstrings and I want to try to help that person with discernment and with wisdom because I'm definitely also a firm believer in minding my own business. It's one of my favorite things to do is to mind my own business. Okay. It's a fine line between help and rescue. Help and rescue. Help I can do. But rescue, you know, we'll, we'll let, you know, the universe and the gods that we serve take care of that. You know what I mean? But devaluing you, again, great sense of supply from doing that. So pay attention. They love the things that they think you don't know. And that sneaky, listen, sneaky scares me. Because you never know what that person is doing and participating in, especially if they have no integrity. Like, can you imagine the possibilities are endless of what they could be doing? And and they're they're getting enjoyment from the fact that you don't know. They'll come right home and curl up next to you as if nothing ever happened. And you'll have no idea where they were, who they were with or what they were doing. And it doesn't make them feel anything. No remorse. No regret. No contrition about their actions. All right. This is serious. It's to be taken seriously. Your life depends on it, literally. The discard, all right, being able to throw you away like you're nothing and feeling like within themselves and their toxic and inflated sense of self, feeling like that they'll be able to hoover you and come back. Oh, that's big. Like that's that gives them a jolt of energy that, you know, you could only imagine as toxic as it is throwing you away the possibility and the chase of them being able to hoover you to come back. They love it. They love it. It's, it's, it's what they live for. And keep in mind, as all this is happening, they're devaluing and discarding you. They're getting supply from other sources as well. They do not generate their own energy. Narcissists and toxic people need, they need supply. And again, that's one of those things where it's like we can't connect to that because we generate our own energy. We don't need to manipulate and, and lead people astray and like leave people on and, and, and look to hurt people and prey on people to replenish our energies. We know how to do that. They don't have the ability to do that. So they need supply. You are in a connection, you know, depending on where you are, you know, in the cycle with, you know, the toxic or narcissistic relationship that you're in. You're dealing with someone that needs supply. They have to operate like this. The love bomb is a farce. It's a facade. It's a lie. It's not true. It's not real. And it's going to come to an end. And you're going to receive punishment because of that. Because they know that the, the energy wasn't theirs. It was a lie. They were borrowing it. They were siphoning it. They were withdrawing it from someone else. A lot of that was coming from you. But your love bomb was being fueled by someone else's energy and vice versa. And you'll have your opportunity, you know, to reciprocate that. You know, you'll have your chance to pay that back to someone else. If you stay in that connection with this narcissist or this toxic person, you'll have your chance to pay it back and you'll be paying it forward because you'll be fueling a toxic and narcissistic connection with someone else the same way that toxic person did you. All right. If you stay, it's a need. It's not a choice. It's not a if it's not a maybe it's it's a win. It's a how. It's affirmative. They need supply. It drives everything that they do. It drives their behaviors. It drives how they treat you. You know what I mean? Everybody has good and bad days. But if they're having a bad day, it's because they're not able to siphon energy from someone or the energy that they're getting from you may not be enough. You know, where it used to be enough, it's like they're getting used to you. They're about ready to devalue you and discard you. They need a new, fresh source of supply. As we previously discussed, once you've gone through the cycles with these people, you'll never be new again. They're insatiable. It's never enough. 
it's never enough they're dark toxic like bottomless pits of toxic need for supply and that's it's gonna always be that way and they're never gonna change even as they're moving around they're giving that same narcissist that you're getting to these other people you know you're just fueling their connections with others in the process of interacting with them so keep that in mind it's a real thing all right lying to you cheating on you giving themselves to other people giving to other people what you felt like you should be getting all of these things act as apply for a toxic person or a narcissist they enjoy it they enjoy hurting you they enjoy pretending all right they enjoy presenting themselves to the public as being something that they're not they enjoy disrupting happy homes they enjoy preying on people they enjoy lying they enjoy like dishonesty they enjoy chaos peace drives them crazy they don't like the stillness of peace they don't know what to do it's like someone who's taking a picture and like they don't know what to do with their hands they don't know what to do with peace which is why sometimes they'll start arguments and tension on purpose that's what they thrive in that's what they know how to maneuver in it's chaos and anarchy they don't respect peace about you not after a while because you become so much of a reflection of what they're not and what they could never be it's like the the, the things that they enjoy about you and that that gives them supply from you in the love bomb phase and like into the devaluation they begin to hate about you because you are a reflection of what they could never be not flawless and not perfect but solid human honest real all right the smear campaign where that's something else that they get supply from all right again we touched on them enjoying you know and their need to control a narrative but the reactions that you get from people you've been to to outings or functions or visited someone's home because you thought you were invited and you're here with this toxic person and you're getting all kind of weird bad vibes and electricity and looks and whispers and you don't understand where it's coming from that's because they've been smearing you playing the victim in front of these other people and then they bring you around for the setup it's like like i said a step away from triangulation because they got all these other people looking at you like giving you weird energy and vi and you don't understand where it's coming from you feel like you're a stand-up individual you haven't done anything wrong you know you're looking good you're smelling good you're on time you're in good spirits but you're in the presence of something that's dark and that's wicked all right and they've been smearing your name to these other people killing your credibility damaging your reputation but at the same time it's a reflection of them why are you here with this person if you have all these negative things to say about them it's twisted but they like to play that victim game oh he or she did this oh he or she did that oh i'm giving them another chance i'm taking it but they're doing it deliberately they don't really care what these other people think for real they're looking to trigger you and get that energy and get that supply from you all right gaslighting you all right lying on you cheating on you spreading falsehoods about you and then denying it that gives them supply so just to sum things up man all the negative things that you could possibly think of where it's like i said it's counterintuitive for you these are things that you would never want to do to someone else you would never want to put someone else in this position they're actually getting supply from it they're looking to make withdrawals they do not make deposits and that's how they operate anything negative that you can think of anything that's sneaky anything that's conniving like these people are getting supply and they're getting enjoyment from it things that you wouldn't want to see other people go through positions that you would never want to see other people in just on a human level just on a like a empathetic level those are the things that they get enjoyment from all right so you're definitely in harm's way if you're in close proximity with a toxic or narcissistic person utilize that gray rock method if you haven't had an opportunity to watch that video i will link the playlist up above all right check out the healing and understanding playlist on my channel for context um, if you have any questions comments or concerns as always feel free to reach out directly either in the comment section let's engage let's keep the conversation going like we always do drop it down in the comment section uh, you can also send me an email to askbizlifestyle at gmail.com that is askbizlifestyle at gmail.com 
I'll throw it up on the screen. My Instagram is worthy XII, worthy XII, worthy 1212 on Instagram. You can definitely DM me there if you have any questions or concerns you'd like to discuss offline. And go ahead and follow me as well. Um, I appreciate you. Check out the description, uh, the description box. I like to pay homage to other creators um, who've helped me along the way on my healing journey. I really do appreciate those creators for the content that they make. All right. It is appreciated for sure. Um, check the about page on my YouTube, man. All the links to my socials are there. Um, the link to my cash app and my PayPal. If you ever want to make a small donation to the channel, it'll be greatly appreciated. Other information there about the channel as well. And as always, I've had a wonderful time. It's been a pleasure. It's truly been a pleasure. I aim to serve. It's not just about me. It's about you. It's not just about you. It's about me. And I'm thankful. And I'm going to keep the content going. And I appreciate you all. I believe in you. So you be sure to do the same. Until next time. It's Biz Lifestyle. We out.